Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak, and I'm here in the studio today filming some steam bending updates to my skin on frame canoe course. And we just finished that work up, so I felt like as long as I've got the steam box still going and I've got some rib stock left over, it might be fun to just do a little bit of impromptu skin boat science here. I've got two different species of white oak cut up into ribs right now, Oregon white oak and Southern white oak, which are two very well-known bendable species. And what we're gonna do is put each of those in the steam box at different time intervals, and then we're gonna compare how they bend compared to themselves at different times, and also how they bend compared to each other. And we're gonna make the bends that you would need to make to build any of my boats, and we're also gonna do some failure testing where we push the bends so far that they start to actually break. So if you're new to steam bending, this will probably be really interesting and really informative for you, but keep in mind that you shouldn't construe this as any kind of an exact science because in addition to any potential differences in bendability between species, there's also a big range of bendability between individual trees within a species. And so it might be that we're gonna find out some information today about which species bends a little bit better and which one bends a little bit worse but just don't take any of that as gospel because there's always a possibility of the variation between individual trees skewing the results a little bit. So either way, let's get into this and have some fun bending. So zooming in on the rib stock here for a second, I'm trying to keep this comparison as fair as possible. Both of these batches of wood are cut to the exact same size. They have similar grain density and similar grain orientation to them, and the grain is fairly straight along both. I can't say for sure, but I feel like these have a similar moisture content. They're not quite as wet as I like to see ribs for going into a boat, but they should be just fine for testing purposes. Now, just a quick clarification here. I realized while I was editing this video that what I've always called Southern White Oak is what everybody else just calls White Oak. And I didn't wanna create any confusion or make you think I was talking about Live Oak or Swamp Oak. And so for the remainder of this video, when you hear me say Southern White Oak, you can just ignore that and think White Oak because all we're talking about here is plain old Quercus Alba. Now, for the Oregon white oak, it is actually commonly referred to as Oregon white oak, and the species name for that is Quercus gariana. So, sorry for any confusion. So, coming over to the steam box here, this is my basic skin-on-frame kayak steaming setup. I've got a wallpaper steamer down below there that's been boiling for about 15 minutes, and it is feeding steam through a hose into the back of this narrow plywood box right here and then I've got a towel draped over the front just to keep all the steam from escaping. And there's a few other technical details about this that I'm not gonna go into right now because I've covered it in other videos. And if you wanna see this whole setup in a lot of detail, you can find that on our website in the free Skin On Frame Kayak Prep course. All right, so I've got some gloves on. I prefer this style of glove for steam bending because it gives me a little better dexterity than heavy leather gloves. I've got my steam bending belt here, which is just a chunk of an old belt that we're gonna use to back some of our bends. And finally, I've got my lucky mushroom clock here so we can keep track of the time. And for our first test, we're going to steam each of these ribs for four minutes. So I'm gonna start with some Oregon white oak. This is our local bending wood, so we're gonna give it the home field advantage. And we're gonna wait a minute, and then we're gonna put in the next one. And I'm gonna put another piece of Oregon white oak in. Anytime you're loading a steam box, you wanna be careful that you don't accidentally push the adjacent rib into the box where you can't get to it. And it's a good idea to leave a little bit of the end sticking out so you can see which rib you're supposed to be working on. And now I'm gonna put in a piece of Southern white oak here. And the reason I'm doing these sequentially in one minute intervals is it's gonna take me about a minute to do each of the bends. And so that's gonna keep me right on top of my four minute steaming time for these. Starting out with this Oregon white oak here, this has been in for four minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out. And the first bend we're gonna do is exactly the same type of bend you'd need to do for the middle section of any of my kayaks or canoes. So this is actually bending really well right now at four minutes. And that would give you a nice square section to your kayak or your canoe, which would help keep things nice and stable. Now, another bend that we sometimes need to do towards the ends of either the kayak or the canoe is a very steep bend right in the center. And in this case, I'm backing this with the bending belt. I'm holding the belt tight and I'm pulling this into a really tight bend. And 
For some of my kayaks and canoes, you really need to squeeze that almost until it breaks. So I can tell that's just about as far as I'm going to be able to go there before it actually breaks. So that's pretty good bends from this Oregon white oak. A little bit of splitting across the top. Now we're going to do failure testing on the Oregon white oak. So I'm going to take this out and we're going to try to tie this into a knot because I feel like this is the ultimate test for bending oak. Now, of course, technique matters here. You have to do this with good technique, otherwise it's not gonna work. And you can see I'm just forcing this into a knot right now. Just seeing how tightly I can bend this. And that's a pretty darn tight knot for 9 32 inch thick white oak. So, pretty good results here with the white oak at four minutes. And it's just starting to split out right over here. All right, so moving on to the southern white oak here, we're gonna do the same thing as before. We're gonna start with the bends that you would actually need to make if you were building one of my kayaks or canoes. So coming to the end here, once again, this is four minutes. And that's a pretty darn good bend. I'm fairly impressed with that. And that, once again, is the square shape you would need to keep your kayak or canoe nice and stable. Now, for the end rib, in some of my kayaks and some of my canoes that needs a very steep bend, we have to do that. So that is also pretty good. This is actually better than I was expecting from Southern White Oak. The big difference I'm noticing between the Southern White Oak and the Oregon white oak is that the southern white oak is harder for me to bend, but I'm still getting pretty similar bends out of it. So pretty good results there. Now let's do some failure testing. Once again, southern white oak. We're gonna try to tie this into a knot. So I'm having a hard time tying this into a knot. And part of that might be, ah, just the stiffness of the wood. So I'm not being very successful with the Southern White Oak here. But it's still making these bends fairly well. It's just a lot harder for me to get them tied into the actual physical knot. And quite honestly, this is very consistent with my previous experience with Southern White Oak and Oregon White Oak. So that's what I was able to accomplish there. You can see I've also got a little bit of split out here, a little bit more split out than on the Oregon white oak, but overall fairly similar. All right, first rib up here, just like before, Oregon white oak. This has been in for six minutes. I'm gonna pull this out and we're just gonna make that same bend over the thumb. I don't go too fast here because if you push this too fast, you're gonna break it. And that is pretty darn remarkable right there. And that's gonna give you that nice square section for stability. And then just like before, I'm gonna wrap the belt over the top here, pull it nice and tight, and I'm gonna bend this in half. And this would give you the first rib in your kayak or canoe where it needs to be nice and steep. And I'm not seeing much in the way I split out at all. I'm just getting a little break in right there. So pretty darn good test. And we're gonna grab our next white oak rib this one, we're just gonna try to tie this into a knot just like before, see if we can get it to actually fail. Not the easiest thing to do. And not bad, I'm just starting to see some cracking out here. Pretty similar to before, quite honestly. And next up we have the Southern White Oak. So pull this out. We're gonna do that same bend over the thumb, just like this. That's pretty good. It's not bending as evenly as the other oak, but that might be a difference with this individual piece of wood. But I'm not getting a lot of split out and that's more than enough for either of my kayaks or my canoes. And then we're gonna take the belt and put it along the back here Now, ideally with this bend, 
you wouldn't be waiting five or six seconds like we just did for that other bend. This would happen right out of the steam box, which makes it a little bit better. So it's pretty good, nice and tight, not getting much split out. Very similar to the Oregon white oak, but a little bit harder to actually bend. And then finally, one more piece of southern white oak. We're going to do the destructive test. I'm going to try to tie this into a knot. And it is stiff, same as before. Very stiff wood compared to the Oregon white oak, but it's taken some pretty tight bends. I'm having a hard time doing this in a way that I'm not blocking the view. Yeah. Okay. Fairly impressive, actually. I've only got a little split out right here, and I've got a knot that's about the size of a softball, which is as good as you can really expect from 9 32nd inch thick wood. So, pretty good test. I would say the two woods are bending pretty similarly at similar steaming times, uh, the only difference being this one's a little bit stiffer. All right, final test here. We're gonna start with a piece of Oregon white oak. This has been in for eight minutes. I'm gonna take it out and we're gonna do that same bend over the thumb right here. And this is the bend that you would make in the middle of one of my kayaks or canoes. And that's actually bending pretty darn good right there. I was expecting that to actually start breaking at eight minutes, but it looks fine. And we're gonna do the bend with the belt to simulate the first rib at some of my kayaks and canoes. It's really important when you're doing this bend to hold the belt tightly. You're looking to stretch the belt because that's what's keeping these fibers from splitting out. And not too shabby. Yeah, starting to get some split out, but that's a pretty darn extreme bend. Okay, next up, one more piece of uh, Oregon white oak here. We're going to tie this into a knot just like before. Just tying these knots itself is kind of its own skill. And now that failed. And I'm going to bring you guys in really close here in a couple minutes and show you this failed spot specifically because that's what we call a hot break. And that's how you know if your wood is steaming for too long. So we'll set this aside. And final rib here is the piece of southern white oak. And we're going to do that same bend over the thumb, just like this. Not bending quite as smoothly as the Oregon white oak, but it's still taking a pretty steep bend on the end right here. I'm getting a tiny bit of cracking, but this is still completely usable. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the belt. Pull it tight and bend it. You don't want to bend too fast because if you bend too fast, the fibers don't have chance to slip past each other. And that is pretty good. Actually a little less split out than on the last one, although I didn't bend it quite as tight. So unfortunately, I don't have any more of this southern white oak rib stock, or we could finish this up by trying to tie a knot with this eight minute wood right here. But overall, this was kind of an interesting demo. So I'm going to turn off the steam box and we'll talk a little bit more about this. All right. So what did we learn here? I would say the first takeaway is just the difference between Oregon white oak and southern white oak. And as far as the actual tightness of the radiuses you can get it to bend to before it splits out, they were remarkably similar throughout the entire steaming time frame. The only difference is that the southern white oak was more stiff and more difficult to actually make those bends. Now, in general, what I hope you take away from this demonstration is that steam bending is actually not that hard. And this is something I like to emphasize again and again because there's so much misinformation out there that circulates in forums that people end up trying to bend species of wood that don't bend very well or bend for the wrong steaming time and then they have bad experiences and steam bending gets a reputation for being difficult. 
So hopefully this gives you something of an idea of what goes into steam bending. As you can see, it's not that difficult as long as you start with good quality bending wood in the first place. But keep in mind, this is also not an exact science. And I really encourage my students to set up their steaming station the day before they're ready to steam their kayak or canoe and just do some tests with the steam bending stock that they have. One, to make sure that it's actually gonna bend well and then also to dial in exactly the steaming time that works best for that piece of wood. Because even though there are some general rules in the vicinity of what you just saw here, the ambient temperature, the ambient moisture, the moisture content of the wood, and the specifics of the steam box setup all have an impact that's gonna push things more towards the four minute end of the range or more towards the eight minute end of the range. And sometimes I've even seen things go outside of that for their optimal bending time. So make sure that you do some experiments to figure out what works for you. And then last thing I wanna to touch on here is just what a good piece of bending wood is in the first place. And there's a much deeper discussion in this in my selecting wood for skin on frame kayak video. And you can also find super detailed discussions in either of my skin on frame building courses that you can watch for free because that's not part of the paid content. So if you wanna go really deep into this stuff, feel free to check that out. But just as a general rule, steam bending wood is a species that's known to bend, that's gonna be clear, straight grained, and has a high moisture content and hasn't been kiln dried. And all those things will come together to make a piece of wood be able to bend as easily as what you just saw. Now, if you don't have access to steam bending wood in your area, which many people don't, I usually encourage people just to order it. There's a couple suppliers that I usually work with that I know will give you perfect quality steam bending wood. You can find those on my website in the courses as well. And it is a little bit expensive to get this stuff shipped across the country or sometimes even across the world but sometimes that can end up being cheaper than trying to work with experimental wood and sometimes not getting very good results. Now, on the other hand, if you have no other option, sometimes you can make less than good steam bending wood work. And specifically, I'm thinking of a gentleman up in British Columbia who just built a beautiful canoe with air dried yellow cedar that he soaked in water. I know another gentleman in Thailand that has made a couple canoes with rattan ribs. Um, I've had a couple of people build smaller pack canoes with kiln dried beach that is soaked in water for a couple weeks first. And there are some significant downsides to that because it's not a rot resistant wood and it also is not a very strong wood, but it does bend very well, even if it's been kiln dried, if you soak it in water. Some of my English builders use a species of oak called Quercus rober, which is the English equivalent of a white oak, I guess you would say. And then some of the people that I've worked with in Scandinavia have used ash for the ribs as well. So lots of different options for steam bending, but usually it's worth spending the time and money to get good bending wood rather than just getting really frustrated with wood that doesn't bend very well. So that's it for now. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And as usual, you can find us on our website capefalconkayaks.com where I've got a bunch more skin on frame building video courses, plan sets, and various free skin on frame resources. You can find us on Instagram at capefalconbuilds where I post a daily build blog of everything I'm working on in the shop here. And like I say every time, even if you're not normally a social media person, I would really encourage you to check that out because my schedule doesn't let me make these YouTube videos very often, but it's really easy for me to post to Instagram every day. So once again, that is at Cape Falcon Builds, where you're gonna find a bunch of skin on frame paddling videos, woodworking videos, and all kinds of design information that you're not gonna find anywhere else except for inside of my paid courses. So that's it for now. Take care, be safe while you're paddling, and have fun building your skin boat.